hey guys, what's happening? So, I had this little device for a while, and I made a little case for it. Uh, but it's a K-USB-A um, clipper accelerometer. Um, nice thing about this one is it's USB. Um, had it for a while, but let me open up the case and I'll show you what it looks like. Yeah, so I mainly, mainly designed this case for like bed slingers. That's why it looks like that. You can do it on your bed, like an Ender 3 or any sort of bed slinger. Um, yeah, it's critical. If you're going to be running clipper, then you definitely need to get like an accelerometer. It makes the quality of the prints so much better. And I'll give you a, an example. This is a uh, corner for one of the printers I'm designing. A new printer, not the uh, not the Orca. It's a different printer I'm designing, ultra fast. Um, but look at the hole right there. See the hole? Well, there's no ghosting. You don't see any extra artifacts. I mean, look at the hole quality. You're not going to get that on a bed slinger. I mean, you can help. You can reduce it. Because see, it's it's the weight of the bed, and like when the when the head tries to change corners, you know, between like belt slack and other stuff. But yeah, it just it can't turn the corner fast enough, so it wants to overshoot. So that's actually one of the things the accelerometer accelerometer does to help it. Um, so I'm actually I tore down my other bed slinger. I'm actually using the parts to build this new printer, and uh, I haven't actually released it yet. I haven't even made a YouTube video about it, but but I'm almost done with it. So um, this is my first printer uh, they ever had. It's called a printer bot. I actually love this printer. I, I print. I've printed thousands and thousands of parts. Um, you know, it's been upgraded electronics over the years, but I love this printer. Um, but one of the issues, like I have ghosting issues with this thing. I'm actually running Clipper on it. Um, but I want to hook up my accelerometer to this thing and uh, you know get some better prints. So I do actually get some ghosting. Just because with this thing, the bed moves around this way, and you have it going this way. Um, so you do actually have a, a, like a larger mass. It's not like a Core XY. Alright, so here is the Orca printer. Still working on this thing, still doing some upgrades to this one. So I'm, I'm actually simultaneously building two different printers right now, or designing two different printers. Um, I mean, they're two different concepts, and you'll see I haven't released the second one yet. Um, this one's a Core XY, and the other one's going to be a Cross XY Gantry. Um, but this actually, I'm running a CAN uh, tool head back here, and it runs an accelerometer on it. But let me show you why I chose the uh, KUSB. The, I, I chose, chose a KUSB just for ease of connection. It's not like I don't have another one. So this was the original traditional, like, uh, accelerometer you'd get. I think it's an like ADL3 something. ADLX340, something like that. But this is the typ typical one you do. You hook it up to like the um, you know Raspberry Pi GPU uh, GPIO pins, and uh, you know it's just, it's just more of a headache, you know, um, hooking up to your GPIO pin. And just the whole setup is more difficult. Whereas with the USB, it basically acts like a like a three printer control board, like an MCO. So when you define it, we'll go through. I'm gonna compile the software, but you can when you define it, you define it as like a like a control board, the same as like a this is a SKR 1.4. It's the same thing. So in Clipper, it looks exactly the same thing. It doesn't know. Um, so this basically runs like a Raspberry Pi uh, processor. Um, so it's the same as like an SKR Pico, the same exact processor. So I'm going to hook up my little test uh, Raspberry Pi 4 here. Um, this is like a Pi 4. Or not, no, not Pi 4. This is a uh, actually Raspberry Pi 1 B+. Plus. Um... But I don't, I don't actually do like a, I don't run on 3D printer. I just do to like compile firmware and do tests and stuff, test main boards and stuff. But uh, all right, so I'm gonna get this thing flash, and I'll show you the flashing process. Pretty basic, compile the firmware, and it's like I said, it's, you flash it just like an SKR Pico. So this was the uh, first USB accelerometer I ever saw uh, for Clipper. So actually, in my little case here, I. Uh, I'll put a link down below where you can get this to my thing wrist page, but I put a little hole there so you can put down the reset button. So to flash this thing, uh, you hook up a USB cable to it, you hit the reset button, and in Windows, it will actually open up a folder. It's really simple, then you just copy the firmware over to that folder. And this is actually a really easy one to flash compared to like a STM32. Alright, so to get a baseline, I'm going to put out a small 20mm uh, calibration cube. And we're going to take a look at the ghosting artifacts, which access is worse, and uh, someone's going to heat this up. 
And then I'm also going to upgrade the firmware because you kind of want the firmware to match on Clipper. Uh, I've actually already flashed that thing. I've never used it, but I flashed it. And But the issue is you want the firmware to match whatever is on Clipper. I know that I had some issues between like 11 and 12. Like when I had version 11 firmware and then I was running version 12 Clipper. A couple of my devices on that CAN bus board that I showed you on the Orca printer. Um, Alright, let's do a quick baseline here. Yeah, see all the ghosting on this thing right here? On the X. So the bed is the X, it's this right here. Going back and forth. Yeah, see all that right there? What the Y? You can see it here in the Y. The Y doesn't seem as dramatic, but... Yeah, that in the corners. Look at the corners here. So I think I already did a pressure advance. Um... Okay, let's do the uh, calibration. Alright, so I've got a clamp down there, and I'm going to go back into Clipper and get this thing set up. Alright, let's run that again, and Super Calibrate X. Alright, let's see. You can see it shaking right there. I don't even know if the camera's going to pick it up. But yeah, it's vibrating back and forth. Alright, so. Now that the X is done calibrating, I'm just going to copy and paste this, save the configuration. Paste. It's going to reboot Clipper. Alright, so I am going to come back and do the uh, Y axis. Well, I think I'm going to modify this thing again, then I'll probably create some kind of permanent mount for this, this thing here. Not permanent, but a uh, place where I can attach it better. I just have it connected to the, the BMG extruder. Alright, let's run that command. Alright. Alright, with this run, I'm going to save the config and I'll do a calibration. Alright, now that you can see when I did the save config, the X and the Y, now that's at the bottom of the configuration, so if I ever reboot this, it's going to be there. Um, Alright, let's do another... Um, I'm going to keep this plugged in, that way I can use it again and uh, do another calibration cube. Right, it's getting kind of dark in here, but let's take a look. Hmm. No difference. Hmm. No, I actually did actually make an improvement. Thinking about it. Yeah, these don't seem as pronounced right here. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. I guess the more I look at it, from depending on what angle, you know, this actually looks better here. But you, there's still lines. It's just reduced. Let's see the Y. Mm. Yeah, it's better. It's better in the Y too as well. It's almost like an optical illusion, though. Depending on what the, the the light how it picks it up. Um. Yeah, no, overall I think it improved it a little bit, so I'm going to have to play with it, but this video is really just a matter of, you know, getting this thing set up and working. Um, but yeah, it's critical, man, like with the crit, <laughs> if you have Clipper to run these things, it, it'll typically improve your quality of print a lot, but, alright, so if you saw this on Amazon, I'll put a link down below where I got mine, I think it was like 25 bucks, so a little bit more expensive than some of the other ones. But it was like the first one I ever saw that came out with a USB version of an accelerometer. Um, it's funny, it's, I, I've had it for probably about a year. It's the first time I had a chance to play with it. So, Alright, cool. Um, awesome. Yeah.